Hi, my name is Tim Lloyd Yates, and I'm the advocate for the Bristol Older People's Partnership Board. And uh, today I'll be telling you um, a little bit about what happened at our last meeting, which was held at City Hall um, on the 23rd of September 2014. Now, if I may, I've got some uh, notes here on my iPad, so I'm going to be referring to those. Uh, the first item that we discussed was um, the Bristol Ageing Better bid, and I'm delighted to inform you that um, our bid to the Big Lottery Fund was uh, successful, and Bristol has been awarded a grant of £5.9 million pounds, um, over the next five years, and it's specifically to reduce loneliness and isolation in older people. Um, there's over 100 partner organisations in the Bristol Ageing Better uh, coalition, if you like, um, and that's managed by um, a committee, um, chaired by um, Mark Baker with Judith Brown as his, his deputy. Um, and um, it's their job, if you like, to make sure that the, the voluntary sector plays a key part in, um, in services uh, that are commissioned and that this is done in a, uh, a sensitive and a joined up way. Um, this was something picked up by the chair of the meeting, Mike Hennessy, who said he wants to make sure that there's a joined up approach between the Bristol Older People's Partnership Board and the Bristol Ageing Better Board. Um, as most of you will know, the, the Bristol Older People's Partnership Board is probably one of the best attended boards um, in the city. There's always 30 people there and always half of those people are older people um, representing different communities in Bristol. So I agree with Mike, I think it's really um, key to the success of Brit Bristol Ageing Better that older people are at the heart of everything that is done during that project. Um, how do we ensure that that happens? Well, a lot of those people already sit um, on, on, the, on the Bristol Older People's Partnership Board, so that seems to make sense to me. We talked about um, a process, a, a process which um, will involve some kind of procurement, um, may or may not be called tendering, but very important that it's um, a process that's completely um, open to all. Um, and um, Judith Brown gave a commitment, a very welcome commitment that um, the voluntary sector will be at the heart um, of those things. Um, the, co the commissioning is going to take um, a particular look at at-risk groups um, in the city. And some of those include, for example, people who are over 85 years of age, um, people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender, carers, um, uh, people who at the moment are living in care homes. Uh, and there are some other at-risk groups as well. And those people were found to be particularly at risk of loneliness and isolation, so they will um, form part of a particular thrust of this, um, of this initiative. So brilliant news um, to kind of to, to, to start off with. There was an agenda item on uh, cities of service. Um, this one will be carried over to the next meeting, and Kay Russell's going to um, report to us on that. Uh, there was a, an update um, from Bristol Libraries uh, and they're seeking to uh, reinstate or secure um, their home library service for vulnerable people um, and this is going to be coordinated by the Royal Voluntary Service, the RVS. Um, Katie Bodor is the person who is um, co coordinating this project. Very exciting, um, Katie's looking to try to add value um, to this service so whilst we're delivering library books to um, older people what else can we do? Can we signpost them to services? Can we look out for signs that people are lonely or isolated? Um, are there other things that, that we can offer? Um, so I think that's a very uh, enlightened view and um, something that we ought to support. Um, one of the other big points at this meeting was the care home strategy consultation. This is being undertaken by Sally Triplett at Bristol City Council in the Adult Social Care Commissioning team, which I believe sits under uh, Leon Goddard. Um, it's a, a three-year strategy that is feeding into, and the consultation runs until the end of October the 29th. There's an opportunity for you to, um, to complete your views on the consultation on the Bristol City Council website. And also the council has got paper copies of documents which can be sent out on request. So if you're not online, um, then do um, let the council know, give them a ring and they'll send you a paper copy. The idea is that it aims to increase independence, reduce the number of people who have to reside in, in care homes. Um, and uh, the draft document is due um, after the consultation in December 2014. The final document then coming out in January 2015. After that, then there's a tender exercise for providers. So in a, in a sense, this consultation 
is the precursor to what they're going to put in the care contract um, which the providers who are tendering for those services will have to adhere to. Um, obviously I have a particular interest in, in care homes, um, uh, visiting over 100 different care homes each year myself. Um, and my particular um, interest is that the lived experience of people who have to live in these places. And so I made a point at the meeting um, that I would like quality of life and the lived experience to be well defined um, in this um, consultation and in the um, subsequent strategy. And actually, um, if we were to do that, Bristol would be seen as being a progressive um, authority because um, a lot of care contracts don't contain that stuff. So I think it's a great opportunity and I'm going to be pushing this you know, quite, quite hard as a particular passion of mine. We were told that um, the venue for future meetings will be changed, City Hall will be closed for meetings for refurbishment. Next meetings likely to be somewhere like Broad Broadmead Baptist Church, Colston Hall, Temple Street, somewhere like that. Um, I'll keep you informed and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, we also looked at the membership of the Bristol Older People's Partnership Board and Geraldine from Bristol City Council uh, went through who currently sits on the committee. She identified a number of people who are not currently attending. She also identified a number of people who we thought as a, a committee ought to be attending. Um, so there will be some revisions to the membership of the board. I think if anything the, the complement of board members will go up rather than down um, and uh, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, we were given a copy of the corporate plan and there's going to be um, a link um, for you to, to follow, to click on, so that you can read uh, where we are up to date with this corporate plan for Bristol City Council. Uh, and that link should appear underneath this video, so have a, have a click on that and see what happens. Uh, a couple of other things uh, appeared. Um, uh, Angela Rossett is an, uh, a great advocate for older people who don't have access to the internet. and she quite rightly says it's easy to assume that everybody does these days not the case she talked about the importance of meeting papers being received in hard copy um, before the lay reps meeting um, it's too much to try and get your head around some of these big issues um, if a pile of paper just lands on your desk just before the meeting yeah it certainly is Angela well said yeah sphere project um, which is a project using smart technology in the home um, to help keep people uh, living independently and it involves monitoring different things around you, your movement, how you eat, um, how you move, so that it can identify patterns and it could potentially spot if you've hurt yourself or if you're not looking after yourself um, particularly. Uh, this is being coordinated by um, Ben Meller um, who used to um, be the liaison person for, for Bristol Museum's top guy. Um, and um, as I understand it, they've just acquired or rented a house in which to um, install a lot of this technology in the city and they're going to be coming back to us um, with updates in the future. Uh, one other bit of any other business, uh, Rosa Hoy um, talked about a big grant that's just been awarded for Bristol and Avon Chinese Group um, for the expansion of their helpline service. I'm personally delighted, I think Rosa is a force for good and I'm very delighted that she's uh, getting more support on that. The next meeting of the British, uh, the Bristol in fact, Older People's Partnership Board is the 16th of December 2014. I'll be there. Um, I'll do a report afterwards. Hope you've enjoyed listening. Thank you.